The second decision you'll have to make is whether or not you want to configure the disk as a basic or a dynamic volume. And, and it's here where you find a lot of people that kind of automatically focus their attentions over on dynamic volumes and sometimes too much to their detriment. The basic volumes have been around and in existence since, gosh, since the MS-DOS days. They've been around for a very long time. And so because of that, they're exceptionally compatible with the variety of different applications and Windows services that you may need to attach or lay on top of a basic volume. And in fact, today, you still find basic volumes as a common configuration in a lot of disk locations, uh, even considering some of the dynamic volumes additional benefits that we'll talk about here in just a second. Now, the big thing about basic volumes is that the basic volume kind of thinks as the volume as the, its entire universe, meaning that you can extend a volume into additional space on a particular disk, but you can actually only extend that to adjacent, contiguous, unallocated space that happens to be on the same disk. This kind of introduces a problem in some cases where you may need to extend the volume past the maximum size of the disk that the volume happens to sit on. In those circumstances, Microsoft has provided a way to incorporate some of these other added advanced storage technologies into the Windows operating system as part of what are called dynamic volumes. Dynamic volumes is just a kind of a switch that you will flip from a basic volume. Disks are automatically created as basic by default. And once you switch over to a dynamic volume, it can support additional advanced volume types like spanned and striped and mirrored and RAID 5 type volumes. These also can support an unlimited number of volumes as opposed to a much more limited number of volumes that you see with basic volumes. Spanned volumes uh, can extend across multiple disks as well. So I can actually use a spanned volume type to create one storage location, one volume, that spreads across multiple different physical disks. However, it may not always necessarily be the best choice for the type of server or service you may be using. Now I say that because in the, in the academic world, so talking just about this exam, your eyes can sort of automatically drift towards dynamic volumes as being the singular best approach for any of the disks that you may create. However, there are many situations where the types of additional functionality that a dynamic volume provides can be better provided, better serviced by some other solution. For example, if you're using a storage area network and connecting up your server directly to, to that storage area network, perhaps through iSCSI or Fiber Channel, the LUN, the disk that is provisioned and made available to your server, may arrive as a basic volume that is being provided from your storage area network. You may not necessarily want to add the additional logic and code of a dynamic volume over the top of that LUN, instead allowing the storage area network to handle any extensions or any manipulations that need to happen. So this last little soliloquy has really nothing to do with the exam, but just something to stick in the back of your mind as you go about performing these actions in production, because sometimes the basic volume is still perhaps the best volume approach for your needs. Now, I want to show you just again a couple of ways in which you can go about configuring either a basic or a dynamic volume. The basic volume is automatically created anytime you bring a disk online and initialize it. And as you can see here for our disk one, that disk one has been made available as a basic volume just because that's how it works. But if I need to convert it to a dynamic volume, I can do so by right clicking and choosing convert to dynamic disk. This selection to convert it to dynamic disk will allow me then to take advantage of all the other fun functionality that it will get out of Windows Server. And in fact, if I go down here and I choose these two disks that I've already created, let's go ahead and convert these both to dynamic, disk one and disk two. Doing so converts them from basic to dynamic and then makes available the additional functionality that we see down here with our volumes. Back over here in the, uh, in the command line world, as you can see, the convert command that we were looking at just a second ago, in addition to being able to convert uh, from MBR to GPT or back, it's that same convert command that disk part has that allows you to convert a disk from dynamic to basic or from basic to dynamic. 